Are you an essentialist? But I couldn't help and notice the similarities between essentialism and minimalism. And I think minimalism is a bit far-fetched for people. They're like, oh, definitely not a minimalist. I don't own one fork and one knife, right? But I thought essentialism was kind of like the new minimalism. Because for me, minimalism is, the, is intentional living. It's the pursuit of less, right? And this is a funnel that I shared on minimalism. If you're interested in that entire situation, go check out my YouTube video. But the minimalism funnel, they end here at the pursuit of less. And I feel like that's exactly what essentialists are doing. They're also ending here at the pursuit of less. So two different approaches, but ending at the same place. And that, that makes my heart happy because it's like the pursuit of less is so simple. Now let's dive into a summary of essentialism by Greg McEwen. We're going to talk about it in three segments. How a non-essentialist and an essentialist thinks, how a non-essentialist and an essentialist acts, and what the non-essentialist and the essentialist gets in return for the way that they think and they act. Cool? Cool. Here's the thing. It's, it's a spectrum, okay? So I don't ever want anyone to watch this and feel like, oh my god, I'm a non-essentialist, my life is doomed. No, absolutely not. Everything's a spectrum. Everything is movable. We're going to talk about how to get you here. So first, let's break down how the non-essentialist and the essentialist think. Okay. So this guy here, imagine this is you. And in front of you, you have two paths that you can take. So say you have um, a really important meeting at work. And at the same time, you also have a personal event that you need to attend. What do you do? Most people would want to go to both. If you are in this scenario where you have competing priorities, you might think, hey, I have to. I have to do both. You might think in your head, hey, it's all important. I'll find a way to squeeze it all in. Okay. And the last thing that you might also have dialogue in your head is how can I fit it all? So you're actually trying to problem solve for how you fit it all. And here's a quote that I really enjoyed and hopefully this resonates with you. If you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. If you don't have your own plans, if you don't have your own priorities, what ends up happening is you're going to start prioritizing other people's priorities. So the trade-off is something that the essentialist is super familiar with. The essentialist takes the trade-off out of their back pocket like, yo, I got the skill, let me flex. If I want to do this one thing, what is the trade-off? What am I giving up? in order to do this one thing. So understanding that there's this beautiful balance of your time. And if you're giving your time to something, you're not gonna be able to give your time to something else. As simple as that, right? Um, now this is why the trade-off is very difficult for the non-essentialist. And this is an experiment and I think it's a super cool experiment. Um, it's called the endowment effect, okay? So the way that this experiment was done was they had three different groups of people. One group was the control group. The other group, they gave a cup, just a regular generic cup. Let's think it's this, okay? A cup, here you go. All right, um, how much are you gonna price this cup? It's not yours, it's just a generic cup. How much are you gonna price it? Most people will say like what, like, I don't know, 250, three bucks, something like that, right? They ask the next group of people. Okay, same cup. This is your cup. You own this cup, but now you're going to sell this cup. How much are you going to sell this cup for? The people who own the cup will be like, ooh, this is a really nice cup. It's very sturdy, so I'm going to sell it for, hmm, I don't know, $5? $5.15 maybe even? Yeah, something like that. So when you own something, you price it as higher. When we own something, we think that the perceived value of this is higher than if we did not own it. That is called the endowment effect, okay? Similarly, with decisions, say you have two job offers. When the non-essentialist gives up the job, they feel like they lost. But guess what? The job wasn't yours. You had to make a decision and you chose this. So the non-essentialist feels a sense of loss during the trade-off, and that is the Biggest difference. So the essentialist thinks, hey, I choose to do this. Only a few things matter. And they're asking themselves the big key question of what are the trade-offs? Whereas the non-essentialist is asking themselves, how can I fit it all? Very different question and it leads to very different decision-making patterns, right? So a non-essentialist in terms of how they think, they try to be all things to all people. An essentialist? 
less but better. Let's shift gears to the second part, which is how they act. What you do in. I mean, a non-essentialist has major FOMO of missing out on any kind of opportunity. They're just like, well, I should be there. You're trying to force yourself to execute at the last minute. Um, the other symptom, I would say, of how a non-essentialist acts is you might skip on sleep. So they react to what's most pressing. They say yes spontaneously. So if you ask them like, hey, do you want to collab? Yeah, for sure. Hey, you want to go to dinner? Yeah, for sure. They force execution at the last moment. So they're not really planning ahead of things. They're kind of doing it as, as the deadlines approach them. You can multitask if you want to. You totally can. But you cannot multifocus. You're not really being present in the moment. And that is something that an essentialist does really well. They're very good at being present, okay? Think of the essentialist like a hawk. That they can go in laser focused for the kill and they're super productive and not only productive but they're also like fully there to execute this task. There is this term that um, Greg McEwen who is the author of the book Essentialism shared with us and he said it was poetical work. So they bring forth more value and more quality by removing work off of their plate. So sleep is super essential. Get your sleep. Six to eight hours yo. Let's do it. Um, an essentialist makes know their best friend, okay? So they pause to discern what really matters. And you say no to almost everything except for what is essential. Saying no is not a mean thing. It's not a rude thing. There are very many ways, very many ways <laughs> to say no nicely, okay? Um, and the last piece is you remove obstacles to make execution easy. So a non-essentialist they have the undisciplined pursuit of more. They try to get more because they think that by doing more, they're going to get farther. But it's actually counterintuitive, okay? So the essentialist has the disciplined pursuit of less. Do less, but better. Remember, that's how they're thinking. And so that obviously trickles into how they act. And they're very disciplined about it. What do they get out of life? So one of them gets this. And the other one gets this. Okay. Um, obviously the examples are going to be individual to you, but here's the truth. Like the more you take on, the more chaotic and the more busy your life is going to get. Okay. And if you're taking on things and just saying yes, spontaneously, if you're not truly enjoying the work that you do, if you're trying to spread yourself way too thin, you are going to hit a breaking point. That's, that's just how this works. Whereas an essentialist, they've done the hard work of saying no, they've done the hard work of eliminating the people and the work and the, the non-added essentials out of their life so that they can choose very carefully who they spend their time with, what kind of work they do, and they experience the joy in that journey. They're not racing through life trying to get to a particular destination. They know that this is life. The journey is the life. What do non-essentialists get? They get a life that does not satisfy. An essentialist lives a life that really matters. They have crafted this life for themselves. I think this is a really nice summary for everything we talked about because we did talk about a lot. The essentialist journey is the quiet revolution, okay? Um, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully this was a good summary of the book. Okay, bye guys. Bye!